Okay, so let's see, we're talking about our flow divider. Um, and I just have to figure out where we were. Valve is spring loaded to the closed position. So an idle, at idle, at idle, at idle, the V slot, the V slot limits fuel flow to nozzles. Limits fuel flow to nozzles. Two nozzles. As power is increased, as power is increased, the flow increases. The flow increases. And the V slot, V slot opens to a point. Opens to a point where it no longer regulates. It no longer regulates. Regulates flow. And nozzle orifice. controls flow. Of course, I say that it's you also have to remember what's going on in the fuel servo unit where it's doing all of its work and just sending fuel out. And then you have these two other orifices downstream that play a part in it. All right, I want everybody to catch up and I want you to be with me on this next point because this next point D, it, it sort of means everything. It's like one of those things where um, if, you only, if you could only learn three things about this system, and the three things were how to adjust the idle speed, how to adjust the idle mixture, this third thing would be right along that line is what does this gauge mean and what is it telling you? So, all right, because, because, because nozzle pressure, nozzle pressure, nozzle pressure increases in direct proportion to metered fuel flow, to metered, metered fuel flow. All right, because nozzle pressure increases in direct proportion to metered fuel flow. I don't know if I want to say, yeah, fuel flow. Okay, that works. Um, in other words, as pressure increases, so does flow. So I'll put that one. Um, in other words, or IE, as pressure increases, so does fuel flow. All right, everybody follow me on that. So in order to get more flow out of those nozzles, you got to have more pressure in the flow divider. So the more fuel I have, more pressure I have on the flow divider, um, it's going to open up the V slots all the way and more fuel is going to flow through the thing. So because of that, I could figure out exactly how many gallons per hour are flowing based strictly on the pressure inside of the flow divider. So a pressure gauge, a pressure gauge, gauge, a pressure gauge installed in the flow divider, in the flow divider, serves as a fuel flow gauge, serves as a fuel flow gauge. So I want you to think about that a little bit. If I really, if I wanted to know the fuel flow through a line and some airplanes do this. So I got a fuel line and what they do is they just put some sort of box apparatus with a little thing out here and they put a little wheel out here with, with little, you know, whatever's on it. 
And so as fuel flows through there, it spins the wheel. And then this box kind of figures out, well, how fast is the wheel spinning? And based upon how fast the wheel's spinning, it's going to put out an impulse and say, that is your gallons per hour. All right? So that's one way to do it. But you got to have a moving part in there, and it has to do that. Another way to do this is to say, well, I've got some sort of fuel line. And that fuel line then goes to um, a nozzle. And the nozzle has got a fixed orifice on it. And more nozzle and so over here I put something that is actually just a PSI gauge and then right next to it I put okay if PSI is um, three then the gallons per hour must be um, I don't know you know 15 and if the PSI is five then the gallons per hour must be 20 I'm just making up some numbers here but you follow how that is and you just put a little you could actually put a little chart and you could make it up and you can just stick it Right in, right in front of the, the pilot. And so, hey, just look at your PSI gauge. And because of that, we know what the gallons per hour is. So you could calculate that out. Does everybody follow me on that one? All right. Yeah. But they don't do that. They don't do that. They just take this gauge right here. And instead of writing that equals that, somebody came up with a better idea. Well, why, why not? Let's just don't write PSI. Let's just not tell anybody. And let's just call this gallons per hour and just change the face. So it used to point right here at three, and you had to look at the chart, and somebody said, no, 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 don't put three there. Just do that. Change it to gallons per hour, and then write 15, 15, and nobody's going to know the difference. Did you guys follow that? If you don't, so. it's really going to screw you up from here on out. So, yep. yeah. so the, the gauge, it's really a pressure gauge calibrated to read gallons per hour. And like the saying goes, that works perfect until it doesn't work. Mm. So let me ask you this. I, uh, you know, I've, got, I've got a pretty slick lawnmower there that I, my son pushes around the yard with this Brig Briggs and Stratton one, one piston, uh, one cylinder um, operation. And so I decided to do this to it. So I put a fuel injection nozzle on there and I calibrated it all out and and now it runs and it, and it does just that on my lawnmower, except one day, one day, something got in here and blocked off this nozzle. And it allowed a little tiny bit of fuel, but not very much. And my son comes and says, Dad, man, the lawnmower's hardly running, man. You know, it only runs like at idle. It won't take full, full throttle or anything. I said, well, how's your fuel flow, son? He goes, Dad, it's crazy. My fuel flow says it's at 45 gallons per hour. Right, so what, what's the problem? Is he really flowing that much fuel? You got a big it's ass fuel tank. No, it's a pressure gauge. Yeah, it's like blocking fuel, so there's too much pressure. Yeah, yeah. so it lies, it lies to you. It tells you you've got a, a huge amount of fuel flow when in fact, you don't have any. All right, therein lies the, the thing about this system and the continental system that you have to be uh, keenly aware of. When a pilot tells you that they have all of these symptoms and, and they say, but I don't understand. I mean, I've got more fuel flow than I've ever had before. And yet the thing is running terrible. All right. Then you got to go, okay, it's not a flow gauge. It's a pressure gauge. It's lying to you. So as mechanics, we have to turn it around and we have to think about it and think, wait a minute. It's not a, it's not a gallons per hour. It's a pressure gauge. What's my pressure gauge telling me? It's telling me my pressure is too high or it's telling me my pressure is too low. All right. And so, we're going to look at sometimes where, where it can tell you it's too low, when it's too high, and what these various things mean. But if you don't have this concept, you're just going to, you're, you're stuck trying to memorize facts that you just can't. But if you understand this, you can read a question now and go, I know what that means. And just, you can think it through. So uh, let me see. So pressure gauge instead of like a transducer. Yeah. And yeah, and that makes total sense. I, yeah, I can see why, uh, it, like you say, it works really well until it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm going to move this over here so I have more room to write. Hopefully everybody got that. All right, so continuing on the same point. So that was like, you know, I had VII and all my stuff, and I'm kind of over here. So underneath a sub point to that, so important that the pen is to be read. Okay, so if, if one nozzle gets plugged, gets plugged, then uh, 
then that one cylinder will run lean. That makes sense to me at least. And all others will run rich. Anybody care to explain that one away? Extra fuels going to the other three nozzles. Right. It came, it came into the flow divider and the flow divider's job was, okay, I've got this much fuel and I'm going to give it out to everybody equally except you over there who you, you've got a blocked nozzle, so I can't help you. So I've got to divide what, what you are going to get amongst the other three. So the, all the other ones are full, or that one or however, I keep thinking a four cylinder, but not because I'm cheap. So all the other ones are going to rich because they're getting the extra fuel. All right. So uh, two. So this problem, this problem, P -R -O -B -L, this problem will present itself itself as, okay, what are my symptoms going to be? One, I'm going to get a rough running engine. An erroneous high fuel, uh, reading yep you're two steps ahead of me so i'm going to get a rough running engine uh why am i going to be rough because let's say it's a four cylinder one is running lean and the other ones are all running rich so you have a mixed mass of power a mix match of power you have unmatched power in the cylinders we talked about that back in week one or at least module one who knows how many weeks ago that was and so my engine is going to run rough number two i'm probably going to have one hot cylinder one hot chd or maybe even my EGTs are going to be really out of whack. And now a lot of people aren't going to see that, especially if you don't have CHTs or EGT. Or, well, if you have a fuel-injected engine, you usually, uh, most, most pilots with fuel-injected engines put uh, multi-probe CHT, EGT, but they don't necessarily come with them. Um, it just wouldn't make sense to. But so anyway, you can see one hot CHT and definitely probably a mix and uh, unmatched EGTs. And you're going to get high high fuel flow um won't you only get high fuel flow at high throttle so like almost full throttle nope because the restriction in the in the fuel nozzles is only meant for full throttle right yeah but you're adding another restriction in the system that was not designed to be there okay so yeah you add a restriction that would it's just the same thing as saying okay and you're right about that and that was a good thought that um, it's going to present, I would say, probably, would it be worse? Probably worse if the more you brought the throttle up. Um, but um, let's just say we took all those nozzles and we all made them all the next size down. Well, that would increase the, the pressure anyway. So we're going to have high pressure. Remember, the pressure gauge is attached to the, fuel, the flow divider. It's what this extra port is right here that's plugged off. It shouldn't be. So you're always going to see two of these. Uh, one usually has a very, very small opening, and the very, very small opening goes to the pressure gauge, and you don't want to get those backwards, or you'll have a problem all your own. And then the other side goes to the fuel flow gauge, which is the pressure gauge. So we're going to see high fuel flow. Do we really have high fuel flow? No. No. No, we don't. We probably have lower fuel flow or uh, slightly lower because of the blockage. So high fuel flow. I'll put this here. Why? High fuel flow because... Because the fuel flow gauge, the fuel flow gauge isn't really a fuel flow gauge. It is a pressure gauge. pressure gauge reading uh, pounds per hour, pounds per hour, or gallons per hour. So it's reading fuel flow, but it's not a fuel flow gauge at all. So if you had one clogged injector, um, would the gallons per hour kind of scale with the throttle? Because that, that restriction is always on the system. It's always going to be higher than you expect it to be. Okay. And how would you, 
how would you do that? I know like in a car, people put like injector cleaner and just run it really hard. <laughs> oh, we're going we're gonna to get into the, the care, care of these things here really shortly. Okay. And um, it, it gets a little, I don't, I'm surprised I didn't put this in here, but I'm going to get into more of these. Let me see. Where am I going to get this? Well, let's leave it at that for now. Maybe, maybe I had a reason for it. Let me see. Um, where I was going to go with this, and and uh, and, but it, maybe I'm going to cover fuel nozzles here. I just want to make sure. Oh, good. Okay, I do. I do next. I just want to make sure I cover it. So if I do it now, I'll be double redundancy. There's a reason why I did it now. You'll see why. Okay, so. You get one fuel. If you get two, two are plugged, it's going to get worse. You get three plugs, it's going to get really, really bad. So, you know, this problem may be something like, you know, a pilot calling you and say, man, I just, you know, I need my fuel control looked at. Well, why do you need your fuel control looked at? Well, the thing is just running so rough and, you know, my fuel flow is just off the charts high. Never had that much fuel flow problem before, but now it's really, you know, it's dumping, it must be dumping a lot of fuel in, in, in the engine. And Steve, are you going to be okay there, buddy? I don't know. He's not. And so the pilot is um, he's telling you, hey, well, I'm pulling the mixtures back. I keep pulling the mixture back, pull the mixture back, you know, and I finally get it to where my fuel flows are normal, but now the engine's running even worse. And so, and you realize what, what the pilot's doing is the pilot's simply just chasing after the gauge, which is lying to him to begin with. So that creates a kind of a big problem. So, and let me see, last point here talking about, the fuel servo when, or the flow divider, when the servo is placed in or into ICO, idle cutoff, spring pressure, spring pressure closes, closes the V slot, closes the V slot and prevents prevents the engine from sucking fuel, fuel out of the fuel lines. And Kevin, yeah, we're just talking about the nozzles right here, right? No, nope, we haven't line. talked about the nozzles at all. So, when the servo is placed in the idle cutoff, spring pressure closes the V slot. V slot is in the flow divider. All right, so next we're going to talk about the fuel nozzles. With the exception of most of the fuel nozzles don't have this this end on them past the threads. They end right at the threads. Continental on some engines runs this a little bit further. So if I were to hold this up like that, it would be so difficult to tell if that was a Continental or a Lycoming fuel ejector nozzle. They look identical. They are, uh, the newer Lycomings, I can tell them apart, but the old ones, boy, they all look the same. And so these have a little, let's see if we can... Uh, Take a look at it closer. There we go. Upside down, right side up. Okay, so they're so small. You can see down inside there, it's got that little tiny restriction down in there. I can get it. And so we have a little tiny restriction. 
and then we have a body over it and you can see down in there there's a screen so the threaded part obviously is going to thread into the engine or the cylinder and then what's sticking up above it is that much right there so there's the little screen we're going to talk about that goes up inside of that little cup that little cup and then the um, fuel injector line is going to attach to that end and you can see oh there we go we can see down in there a little bit better is that hole. screen for emulsification well, I'm going to explain the screen. It, it, yes, it is actually. And does this have any writing on it? That says 10, 10 on it. All right, switching back. And I'm going to pull up some pictures and we're going to talk about the the fuel nozzles really as a mechanic this is where you're going to spend all your time um, outside of setting your uh, idle cutoff idle idle mixture uh, for the moment and checking the screen on the servo most of your maintenance is done out here on the nozzles so they're supposed to be taken out every annual every hundred hours and they're cleaned and i'll talk about cleaning i'll write it down but um, a lot of people want to clean them with uh, ultrasonic cleaners and I don't know what it is about ultrasonic cleaners I don't trust them I think there's a bunch of hooey and snake oil so I um, I, I follow their secondary um, method and I'll show you that one which works really well so this is um, the, the nozzle up close and in personal here so um, we haven't talked about the supercharged yet, but there's two different styles. And like I said, the old style, which is what I just showed you, it's pretty much a one piece, pretty much. It is a one piece. They're stamped, made, sent out, one piece. That's all there is. And let me see, I will enlarge it because Hector doesn't have his reading glasses on. There we go. And I don't know that I wrote on it and it didn't come Thank you. So, <laughs> so fuel is gonna come in this way and air is going to come in this way and through the little screen and it's going to emulsify it and just spray it out all right no moving parts that's how it works and um the new style the only difference is the middle restrictor comes out i'm going to show you a little video how that works but otherwise it's the exact same thing um but i'm going to tell you a little about supercharged nozzles while we're looking at this right here i want you to think about something and the fact that this screws into the cylinder and right here is a low pressure under normal circumstances, right? So even at wide open throttle, we've said that if the outside is 30 inches of manif or 30 inches of, of air outside, best case scenario for a, a normally aspirated engine is going to be 29 inches. You're going to always lose an inch past the air filter and by the time you get past the Venturi. So on this side of the nozzle, where the fuel is flowing into and then it's flowing on off into the engine it's 29 inches so this is 30 this is 29. so it's natural for the for the air to go this way because it's going into a low pressure even at wide open throttle this is lower than outside so fuel flows their air flows right through there no problem and fuel of course is being forced in through the pump but if you think about a uh an engine that is turbocharged uh even if it's and we'll talk a lot about turbocharging but um, some of our aircraft engines, they're only boosted up to sea level. So maybe it's 30 here and it's 30 here. But a lot of them are, well, and then as you go up in altitude, it's going to be 30 here and 29 here, and then 30 here and 28 here and 30 here. And you see the outside keeps going down, but the inside just stays at 30. But as soon as you get to the where this pressure is more than the outside, well, then you're not going to suck air in anymore. The air wants to go this way and you could start blowing some of your fuel right out of here onto the hot cylinder and that makes a bit of a fire. So you can't have that. So what you have to have is you put a shroud around it and you pipe this to upper deck pressure, which is to say um, turbo, turbo outlet pressure. So now this is pressurized as well. So you pressurize that and then the pressurized air goes in here and then down and so that's why um, turbochargers have to have the shrouding nozzles. So this is just another, another example of what it's doing here. So air comes in there, past the screen, there's a hole 
one or two holes that come in here, emulsify, and out. And away it goes. So the normally aspirated, there, it's just the screen and yep, the air comes from around the cylinders? That is correct. Okay. I like this, not, this slide a lot because, uh, number one, it shows you what the new two-piece nozzles look like with the, the, um, the inside comes out. This part and this part, they are match set. You can't just take all six of these and put them in one set of containers and six of these and put them in another set of containers. And if you do that, there's, just, there's a simple way to fix it. You buy six new ones uh, because they're a match set. So you don't ever want to mix them up. And because of that, I'm more of the kind of person who um, I will take them apart and I will put each one in its own locked container or I will take one out at a time and put it back in. Um, what this is about, and this is a test that you do often, or at least I did, when somebody's complaining that something's not working well with their engine, you take all the nozzles out, reconnect them to the fuel lines, and start the, you don't start the engine, but you run the boost pump and bring it out of idle cutoff. And just like with the pressure carbs, it flows. Uh, because it's going, the idle spring is holding it open. So you're going to get at least idle fuel. And so you get a bunch of little jars and you run them for a timed period and you figure out if one of them's restricted, this one's restricted because it did not fill up to the line. And that's how you can tell the flow. So it's just flow checking your nozzles. Something you end up doing reasonably often if, um, if you are working on these kind of engines. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the A stamped on these. Um, what, what does I say? Always hide your a-hole. So that's just something you remember. That sounds terrible. So how do you clean them? If you don't like the uh, me, I don't like ultrasonic cleaners. There you go. Are you familiar with this stuff? Uncleaner. Yeah, I figured you'd be the first one to chime in. So this is your good old fashioned. Uh, now, how do you say the word? Hops. Oh. I've always heard it hops. Hops. Okay. Good. That would make sense because it's an apostrophe S, so it's possessive. So you'd have to look at it H O P P E. So that'd be, well, that'd be hoppy. I don't know. I say hoppies. I think it's wrong. So I've heard it both ways. It's yeah. hope P E. But uh, hoppies is number nine. Good. That is gun cleaning solvent. And that is what is actually not me. This is what's recommended by the manufacturer. So, and we're going to see a video on that. What else do I got here? Hey, Kevin, um, is there a, a reason why they started making those two pieces? Was it like a, a problem with the first one? I don't know. It just, what, what I've seemed to notice with, with light coming is somebody somewhere, I don't know, in, in general, in life, people just like, oh, we can make this better. Um, usually they end up going back to the old style, but so far they haven't. So I don't know. Isn't this it easier to clean like that? <clears throat> What's that? Isn't it easier to clean? The table like that? Um, I guess maybe they're easier to clean. You can get into it a little better, maybe. I don't know. It's all the same to me. If you see the procedure, it's like, hey, it's kind of all the same. Um, this picture is actually more pixelated than I thought, but you should know what this is. Idle mixture. Yep, idle mix adjustment. Idle speed. Idle speed. Idle speed. So how do you adjust the idle? So I'm going to ask you, how do you adjust the idle speed? And I know somebody's going to start going off with, well, first you start it up, and then you, I'm going to say, nope, get out of here. Um, how do you adjust the idle speed? You screw this in or screw this out. You start up the engine and then um, pull the throttle back, and wherever it is is what it is. You screw this in for more speed, screw it out for less. How do you know if the idle mixture is set correctly? You start it up, you pull the idle mix out. If you get a rise of 25 to 50 RPM, it's good. If you don't, you adjust it. And that's how you adjust it. Impact tubes, which I already showed you. And that's all the pictures I have for this particular, particular one. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. When you showed that, uh drawing where all the fuel nozzles are lined up and then it's you're testing why the engine's not running right yep like do you use uh like something else for that or do you just literally plug it into the engine no you literally you want to use the engine you want to use the aircraft systems 
So they just have like little cups around the engine then? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you always find that. You know, yeah, mechanics who work on this kind of stuff are kind of funny. We're always looking around for six of something exact. You know, oh, you have six of those? <laughs> you know, like five, I don't know. You know, um, they recommend baby bottles. Um, I've noticed that when my kids were little, um, they hated the taste of the fuel that was left over in their bottles. So I don't know if that's the best. Best uh, and there's lead in there, so you, you got to wash them right before. Doesn't matter. It'll put hair on their chest. I know it builds character. Maybe that's what's wrong with Katie. I shouldn't have tested all. <laughs> it's the little non dish soap, and you'd find. I know. Do, do, you, do you have to wash them first? Well, absolutely. You don't want a bunch of formula or breast milk getting into your bottles while you're trying to do a fuel flow test. <laughs> um. Okay, where am I? Uh, okay, fuel nozzles. We were talking about fuel nozzles. Fuel nozzles, um, they are, they are, are the of the air bleed type, of the air bleed type, which means they have an air hole in it and it's not just raw fuel being thrown in there. Uh, well, I could say that meaning meaning air, air is mixed or air, I put this B, air bleed, is mixed with fuel at the nozzle, is mixed with fuel at the nozzle. Uh, normally aspirated, On normally aspirated engines, the manifold pressure, MAP, manifold absolute pressure, is less than atmospheric, is less than atmospheric. So, air is drawn into, air is drawn into the screen, into the screen uh, slash air bleed hole, air bleed hole, and mixes with fuel. Mixes with fuel. Um, there we go. And air bleed, air bleed, oops, B -O air bleed um, blockage on one nozzle would result and this is gonna be an important point here so make sure you're with me on this one so an air bleed blockage on one nozzle would result would result in the low manifold pressure sucking extra fuel extra fuel um, and allow this cylinder to run rich and all others would run lean. Wouldn't the one run lean? Nope. Nope, you have one rich and all the others are lean. So this is the air, air blockage. Oh, got you. All right, I'll tell you why. Well, I'll tell you why and then I'll write it why. The reason why is because, and I'll, I'll talk while you write this, is that you've blocked off that air passage. And so the low manifold pressure, um, now because you blocked off that air passage, think of the cylinder, instead of it being fed fuel from the fuel pump, from the servo, um, now you're actually sucking it through. Like you put a big syringe on there and you're pulling it back and you're really sucking that fuel through. So on one end, you've got the fuel pump pushing, but on the other end, now you're pulling on it. So because you're pulling on it, 
it's like the orifice got smaller. There's less restriction coming through it. You're getting help. And so if you're getting help through that one, you're going to get more fuel. If you're getting more fuel through that one, that means all the other ones have to get less fuel. So if they're getting less, well, well, we'll stop there and then we'll write this and then we'll continue. Because, because of the sucking action, because of the sucking action, the fuel pressure will be lower. Will be lower. So now, hey, wait a minute, I got low fuel pressure. So what does that mean? Fuel pressure will be lower, indicating low fuel flow, indicating a low fuel flow indication even though fuel flow is normal it's not normal to the cylinders but it's normal to the flow divider <laughs> so indications are indications are so here we are what are we going to have um, one, low fuel flow. But do we really have fuel flow? Yep. No, we do not because it's a pressure gauge. So it's really low fuel pressure. But so you still again, have a good amount of flow, right? What's that? You still have a good amount of flow. It's just not it's a normal flow. Helping it out. Nothing's changed. The servo worked, it did its job. It said for this RPM, for this much fuel going through the impact tubes and the Venturi, you're gonna want this much fuel going out to the flow divider. So it does its job and sends it to the flow divider. Flow divider gets it and says, wait a minute, this cylinder one number one, for some reason is sucking it all out of us. But I uh, say, so, okay, you get extra, but hey, sorry, you other three, number one took it, took a little bit more than its share, like toilet paper. It took more than its share. So none of you get all the toilet paper, so. And so those three are going to get less fuel going out to them. So that would be poor idle. Why? Because one cylinder is running really rich and the other ones are really lean. Um, you get a high idle cutoff uh, because you're good. I see, I see RPM rise, RPM rise uh, would be possible uh, because you have one cylinder running very, very rich. Uh, for um, maybe just poor, poor idle cutoff. Um, in, so because, because engine continues to get fuel. Continues to suck fuel, suck fuel um, from fuel lines. So, if, it, if it's pulling hard enough and it, it actually starts pulling some of the fuel out of its own fuel lines and it keeps on going. All right, um, let's see, number three. On turbo engines, on turbocharge, turbocharge engines, engines, there we go. Turbocharged engines, uh, what do I say? A shroud, shroud is placed 
over the screen slash bleed and plumbed to upper deck, which is to say turbo outlet, turbo outlet pressure. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Still riding. Pretty Still good. Still riding. Good. I was kind of hoping to get to the whole fuel injection thing so that we were done and had it put away when we went on spring break. But uh, with two days left, I don't want to rush. Kind of doesn't look like we will. Um, so I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to rush it. So um, we'll definitely get almost all the way done, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. All right, so let me see. There is an A, there's an A. A stamped, stamped on the wrench flats, on the wrench flats, on the wrench flats. Uh, it indicates, it, It indicates um, that the bleed hole, and I don't know why they did it this way, I really hate it. Bleed hole is 180 degrees to the other side. No, you could have just put the A right where the freaking bleed hole was, but no, we're gonna put the A on the opposite side. So it's on the opposite side. Uh, so A is stamped on the wrench flats, indicates that the bleed hole is 100 degrees to the other side. How do I like that? Yeah, that works better. Um, so you always want to always install, install the A toward the bottom. So air bleed is up. So not only to do it that way, but you have to put the A on the bottom so you can't see it. So that's why I say you gotta hide the A with the whole thing. All right, that seems like a decent place to stop because when we come back, we will talk about, which we already told you about, the picture of the flow test. The flow test. So I will see you guys in about 40 minutes.